want to talk about something that I've been trying to talk about for the past two months, I believe it is. And that is Savannah State University. I kept telling folks that I was going to um, talk about what's going on at Savannah State. Um, someone called me anonymously a uh, couple of months ago, and they said that they wanted us to have the conversation about what was happening at Savannah State. We all know Savannah State is an HBCU, um, but uh, we were told that uh, other uh, D1 schools and uh, what do you call them? Um, PWIs. Yes, PWIs. Be your today. PWIs. Come on, predominantly white institutions. No, 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 no. PWIs, predominantly white institutions. They're getting in Georgia. They're getting lots and lots of money from our state. But we are told that Savannah State University is not allowed to even ask for any money. And they're saying because the uh, registrations are down, the student population is down, they're not supposed to ask for any money. And the way that they get money, yeah, I said the same thing. The way that they get money is based on the amount of uh students that they have enrolled. Well, anyway, um, I jotted down some some things uh, that I found very interesting in the conversation that we were having. Um, and they're talking about uh, the Board of Regents hired an uh, individual for, uh, I guess, the treasurer for the, the, the financial. financial, right. Thank you so much. Um, the financial vice president and this person controls all the monies. Um, they told me to make sure that you all pay attention to what the signage looks like at Savannah state. The signage at Savannah state now looks like the signage at, uh, Georgia Southern. Okay. Um, uh, there's also a young man that was hired a young white guy that was hired and he can no longer sign off on the purchase cards. Now the purchase cards are the cards that departments have that they use that have a certain amount of funding in those um, departments where they could just go and, and take the card, purchase whatever they need for the department. Well, because this individual that's hired is not um, uh, capable and qualified to, uh, have the position is what I'm told that uh, they had to take all of the purchase cards and, and do it a different way. So the department heads that had control no longer have control. Okay. Um, oh, he, the, uh, what they said was he wasn't uh, authorized to sign off on any transactions. And the person from Georgia Southern, there's an individual from Georgia Southern that is signing off on records requests for forms and they they're saying that there's a hidden agenda going on as it relates to Savannah State and the Board of Regents and Georgia Southern. Now, uh <laughs> this is what I was told and this is what I'm giving to you, okay? The grant money from departments is missing. They said they need to know how the money was dispersed. Because they're talking about there's no money from the grants. What's happening to the grants? The HERF money, three times distributed, did not distribute all the money from the HERF money. And the HERF money is... I'm not sure. But here's the main question. Where did the president, the current president, come from? The Board of Regents. Of course, the Board of Regents. <laughs> okay. Um, did not give the money to where the money was supposed to be used for. Four million had to be questioned. Four million, uh uh, four million had to be returned. Earth money was a part of the COVID, um, the COVID money. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The HERF money, uh, some of the HERF money had to be returned. Four million dollars had to be returned instead of them using that money to pay tuition and fines for the students. No, tuition for the students. They used it to pay fines. They used that money to pay fines. What fines? I guess fines for parking fines and all that kind of stuff. 
Crazy stuff, okay? Um, told the police chief just resigned, and that was what, about three, four weeks ago? Mm -hmm. That the police chief resigned, wow. okay? Contracts don't have to be bidded out. If not less than 25000 or 50000 Um the VP spread the contract out over two fiscal years. So the same contractors get it after she breaks the contractor up. Um, there's an interference in the... Oh, no, 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 not that one. Okay. Contracts are always from out of the city, not out of the state, but from out of the city. And um, said, <laughs> said that this individual wants to buy buses for eight hundred thousand dollars, when she could have gotten them for five hundred thousand dollars. That's the buses to transport our students, our athletes from one location to the other. Um, they just bought trolleys from. They bought trolleys. They bought trolleys instead to transport our students. And y'all, I can't delve into it because at the time they gave me this information, it was fresh in my mind. But we've been. Um, we're going to bring somebody on the show to actually talk about what's going on with Savannah State. And I got to say this right here. Savannah State is our HBCU, our historically black college and university. Um, when they say they don't want to give any funds to our college and university, that means what? They setting it up for it to be taken out. Okay? As simple as that. If you don't want to put no resources and funding into a, a entity that needs the resources and the funding, eventually it's just like a house. It's just like a house. If somebody move out that house and nobody go in that house and that house sits there destitute for years and years, eventually what it does, it deteriorates. So if you're not putting the funds and the resources into our HBCU, what's going to happen? Eventually, it's going to deteriorate, and then you're going to have somebody come in and take over, just like they do in the gentrification process here in the city of Savannah, just like SCAD does with our schools, our schools that they said that they could not repair, okay, because there was asbestos in the school. It was this. It was that. All right. We got to be on them. Alumni, alumni, y'all... Y'all need to come together. I ain't going to say y'all we because I'm an alumni of Savannah State as well. We need to come together. We need to come together and make sure that that school has what it needs. We need to hold the regents accountable. At the end of the day, they might say that there's not enough students registering in that school. But guess what? I don't give a god darn because our tax dollars pay into the system and we should get a return on our investment. Now the same way the formula came up where it says you have to have so many students in the school in order for the school to get a certain amount of money. Guess what? Whoever made it, it can be changed. You understand what I'm saying? Just because they say it don't mean that it has to be what it is. If you wrote it in, you can write it out. All right. Now, with that being said, uh, and we'll talk more about Savannah State um, at a later date, but this right here is more important. Uh, 2,100 folks saw that video that I did last night. 2,100 folks saw that video that I did last night. In that video, we talked about, I talked about uh, the meeting that I went to on yesterday with um, the District 1 representative older woman, Bernetta Lanier, she was inquiring about, um, you know, how she could take her, her district to the next level because that district has been uh, experiencing n no kind of uh, resources lately. I, I can't see nothing that has been done in the first district uh, in the last... 20 years. I'm just being honest. You you know, you might have put in a, a highway. I'm not, now, I'm not even talking about coming from the state. I'm talking about coming from the city of Savannah. Okay? Now, you put in uh, sidewalks on Augusta Avenue only to a certain point. 
to a certain point. And then once you got to that point, I don't see nothing else. Now the state did what they had to do down Bay Street, but as far as the uh uh streets, no traffic calming, no lights, no cameras, no action. We went into that meeting with her yesterday with um MPC and we was just talking about what can be done to help that community grow. And we were talking about um, making sure that, you know, there's a, a black business district in that community. Because back in the day, many years ago, now that's where the black business entertainment district was many years ago. So, um, because there were no resources afforded that community for the past 20 years, uh, that community kind of like went down and it's still down. It is the most impoverished community in the city of Savannah. So all the women Lanier went and she was, you know, inquiring. She want to do whatever it takes to bring her district up to a standard of uh, a good quality of life. Okay. Now, while we were talking to the um to the director of MPC, we found out that there were some stats that um was listed in this 2040 plan. Now, y'all know when I ran the last time, I ran on what they talked about in the 2030 plan. The 2030 plan. Y'all, let me tell you something. That was four years ago when they talked about, I'm sorry, three and a half years ago when they talked about the 2030 plan. Now, now I'm just letting y'all see. This is how folk think. This is how folk plan. Four years ago, they had the 2030. Now, here it is. I'm sorry. Three and a half years ago, they had the 2030. Now, here we got the 2040 when we still trying to figure out about the 2030, they what, 10 years ahead. Smoking mirrors. Smoking mirrors. So every, every what, four years? Now, next in the next four years, we're going to have the 2050, the 2060, the 2070. And they steadily moving, moving and shaking while we're sitting as black people dormant. And pushed out. And, and forced out. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to say pushed out. I'm going to say forced out. Okay. With that being said, y'all, I'm going to call in our guests, the guests that we wasn't going to have, because I told y'all I wasn't going to have no guests. It was just going to be me. But I got the phone call and Dr. Deidre Grimm called in and she said she wanted to come and let's have the conversation about equity expert, Dr. Robert Bryant. He just showed the heck up. So guess what? With him showing the heck up, I'm going to invite him to come in. And y'all, we're going to have a candid conversation about equity in our city. Okay? In our city. As it relates to African Americans. Y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. This is about, this is by us, for us. By us. For us, I'm not knocking nobody else. But like I said last night, I can't love nobody until I love myself unconditionally. We are as strong as our weakest link in the city of Savannah. And when I say we, I'm talking about black folk. I'm talking about African Americans. Okay? With that being said, come on in. Dr. Deidre Grimm. And, and, and Dr. Robert Bryant, you're going to have to bring your chair. I got to come on. I don't. I don't. I a special request from, from, from the doctor. You, know, you got a special her. request from the doctor? That's what she wanted, so I, I told her I would. Okay. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Stop it. Stop it right now. I want you to stop it. You know why I want you to stop it? Yeah. Because that's the first time in the history of By Us, For Us, you played somebody's special request. 
<laughs> now, and that's a yeah, I said it moment. Yeah, because baby, one thing for certain, two things for sure. Don't mess with Maestro and his music. Oh, okay. Now, Maestro's on point. Uh, Maestro's on point. Maestro's on Look, point. Maestro said, <laughs> he told somebody one time, uh uh, you ain't got nothing to do with this. So you got the power, sister. Yeah, yeah. She's annoyed. So doc, annoyed. Look here, Dr. Deidre Graham That's got annoyed. the power. Go ahead, Maestro. That's annoying to them. <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for Dr. Graham. Yes. Just for Dr. Graham. Oh, can you turn it up? Can you turn it up? Y'all, we don't own the rights to none of this music. We don't own the rights to none of this music. Oh, no, 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 he wouldn't play my song. He wouldn't <laughs> play that. Robert Smalls. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna talk to Robert Smalls. Oh my God. I'm gonna work with him. Maestro. Uh, my, uh, me, 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 me and, uh, Listen. He ain't no. Listen. I would play gospel had that me, y'all. Put him gospel. You <laughs> been, <laughs> so let, let's be real, right? Yeah. I, you know, I want to normalize our, you know, rap music yeah. because some right. of it's very motivational. It comes from within uh -huh. and the heart. And so, if anybody, I tell anybody, forget the last letter, the letters behind and in front of my name, because this is just who we are. This is our culture. Mm -hmm. And so, when I'm doing papers and studies, this is the type of music I listen to because right, it motivates yeah. me to keep moving. People right, right. right. the beat, the beat. listen to Miller Jackson back then. All right. A uh, 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 wild man, Steve. You know. Uh, 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 red but, but, fox. A red fox. You know. So mm -hmm. look at, yep. and all that's going the on. The simplified monkey. Yeah, yeah, that's right. When you cut the signified, signified when you go on monkey. You social media anything today. You ain't gonna tell me you don't see none, or you if you don't hear none. Right. I, right. In the words, but, but the, 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 in, in, uh, in the words of Nicky White. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> but y'all, I have to, I have to say this. I have to say this, y'all. I truly, truly apologize because y'all know we we a clean show. Right. Yeah. We a clean show. So my and, and Maestro just did not know that that was going to be said. So y'all, please uh, don't go it. away. We still here. We we here. We here. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. Yeah. With that being said, y'all, I'm just going to, um, first of all, I want to thank both of you all for coming. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know that tonight was the night that we're going to talk about racial equity. After I went to that meeting yesterday and um, this was put in front of me and it is a part of the 2040 plan. I said, oh, my God, I could not believe the stats that I was reading. I could not believe what was put in front of me. And I could not believe that this has been going on for 23 years. So I'm going to go in here. And if y'all um, y'all have this up, just uh, uh, go along with me. I'm on page 284. And this is the uh, Racial Equity and Leadership Task Force that Dr. Otis Johnson uh, mandated. I mean, I'm sorry that he he headed. He was in charge of it. Okay, um, and he did this in 2020. So let me get to what's going on in Savannah, and they're talking about housing, housing in Savannah. So many people have asked me, why is the rent so high? Why is the rent so high in Savannah? And y'all, gonna be honest with you, the rent is high because they want Savannah to look like Charleston, South Carolina. And see, they plan things in advance. And you know what they always say? If you want to keep something from a black man, what you do? Raise the price. Hmm? No. You put it in a book. Come on now. Put it in a book. Because guess what? When you put it in a book, they all they have the mindset that black people don't read. Well, honey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me set the record straight. That is so far from the truth. Because we are readers. We are researchers. We are educators, okay? We are some phenomenal people, and we do read. A lot of times they put stuff in, in, in um, what is it, sayings. Mm -hmm. 
And, and we're not the ones that say it. It's other people that say it. White supremacists say it in order to keep us at a certain level. Okay? I don't know where that came up. Put it in a book. Oh, if you want to keep it from a black man, put yeah. it in the book because the black man That's ain't gonna read part it. Part of that, um, the Willie Lynch, um, the Willie Lynch, Lynch, the Jim Crow. Yeah. Well, no, you you couldn't say put it in the book back then because Willie Lynch, that was in, they was killing well, us back, back then, for back reading. Then they wanted to keep it for reading. Now they don't want to read. Exactly. Okay. That's, probably, that's, that's something to think about. Know, sure. But anyway, y'all, let's get into this housing. I'm, I'm gonna take my time to read this. And um, I want you all to expound on what it is that we're talking about because you all are the, the learned individuals when it comes to this we kind of stuff. We're gifted by God. We ain't no better. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm yeah. just saying yeah. you've studied to show oh, yourselves yeah. a yeah. 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 You know? God's gift. Okay. Yeah. While Savannah is still majority black, several areas of the city, downtown, midtown, Thomas Square, etc., have shifted over the last two decades. Race is one factor. Place is the other. Okay? Savannah's African-American population has only decreased by 1.5% since 2010. Okay? But if you look more closely at the census tract level, there's a story not just about race, but about racial and economic segregation. Example, between 2000 and 2010, census track 114, just south of Forsyth Park, just south of Forsyth Park, I'll say all the way to Victory Drive, lost half its black population. Okay? Now, if you think about it, I would say to MLK, Forsyth Park, that's Drayton, to MLK, all the way down to Victory. Kind of Starland all district. Of that, that Starland district. In that, no, Starland is a little further, further down. Okay. Starland goes past 37. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay 37. Oh, the Victorian district in, in that area. Okay, but it includes, it includes all of that. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, almost 800 residents. Wait a minute, let me go, let me go back. Okay, okay. Between 2000 and 2010, census track 114, just south of Forsyth Park, lost half its black population, almost 800 residents, and added 500 white residents. They lost 800 black residents and added 500 white residents. Next to it is census track 113, which lost about 600 black residents and gained almost, listen to this, 7,000 white residents. During the same period, a demographic shift of this proportion did not result from a natural migration or even from wealthier white buyers displacing poor black residents. This is the result of state abdication, prolonged disinvestment mm. that left many black communities in a state of arrested development only to be revitalized by a private market yeah. that further privileges white wealth. Do y'all hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Let me read that part again. This is the result of state abdication, prolonged disinvestment, that left many black communities in a state of arrested development 
only to be revitalized by a private market that further privileges white wealth. Yeah. The story was lifted up in every committee in our time together. It weaves every issue area of the real task force into a cohesive narrative that the fate of the city is inextricable to the deliberative expansion of opportunity for its black residents. What is that saying? You know, you know, you know, so, you know, so, if you if you were around town and you look, you notice in, in, in those spaces how they taking they building these houses like right in between mm -hmm. and what are those houses going for? Right. Now, I'm gonna show you something. Three hundred thousand. You take right on thirty eighth. Mm -hmm. Third bet third on thirty eighth between Bull and Whitaker. That big house. That was my uncle's that house. Mm. So but when the mom she passed, so they sold mm -hmm. the house. When they redid they fixed that house up, but guess what they did? What used to be a courtyard. But look at the house that is built right next between it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that house is gonna go for a half a million easily. Mm -hmm. If not mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And they know this. I've been saying this. I know they're trying to wipe this city out. Right. Of course. Right. They want to wipe it. That's why you, yeah. you, you you look at all down by the post office on Farm Street and all around. Mm -hmm. They want this city to be just like Charleston. But not, but, but not, okay. not even just Charleston, other places. Yeah. It's, it's the like, only place that I can relate to because I see Charleston. I see what they've done in Charleston, South Carolina. They might have done it in other places, see, but they have actually done it. I see, I see America. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, and would you would you agree with that? Very much so. Yes. Yes. It, even that's in why, areas that's why, like Compton and Crenshaw. Right. That's why I never, I never, when I'm sitting over here, I never like to narrow it down. Mm -hmm. Because this, this is America. It's right. all over. It right. Is. It's, it's all over. Down. But my point, the point that I'm making is something is close to us that we can relate to. We're not going to get, a lot of people ain't going to get the Compton. The, they ain't going to get the, the West, West, I, can go, I, can, I can go too. to the West End. And I can name so many places in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Right. Where they live the West End. Mm -hmm. You know, Bell all Line. down in the block. So many places. You know, you know, I mean, this this, this, this is what it is. Because and not only that, hold, hold, it's like, hold on now. This city is too black for this to be the third business port too. Mm -hmm. Come on, second, yeah. second, so, second. So so we so we so we move past. Mm -hmm. uh, we the between, second. Between We're right behind Long Beach now. And then New York, you got New York and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we surpassed. You surpassed. Mm -hmm. See that? So you know, and this is and this is, this is what it is. Okay, let's expound. Okay, so that. I wanted to say something because you said the state abdicated their mm -hmm. role. But what about city leadership prior to the state? Come right? on now. So we can't just put everything on state leadership. You know, that that happens at home first, right? Mm -hmm. So local leadership was derelict in their duties and not be doing what they needed to do to make sure that black wealth was capitalized on. Mm -hmm. um, some, some of the research shows even when you look at the properties that black people held within the late 20th century here, mm -hmm. there has been a devaluation of almost 25% in black neighborhoods yes. as opposed to our white counterparts. Mm -hmm. And so that all also leads us to where um, our homes are not as worth as next as our next door neighbor who would be Caucasian, and so therefore their millage rate goes up. Our still is going to go up, mm -hmm. even though we don't have the same value and we can't afford to pay it anymore. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are pushed out to the hinterlands in the city, and and like you said, on a national level, within like the last decade, almost two decades, overall. Um, there has been a devaluation of almost $160 billion with a B in yes. black neighborhoods. Yes. So that's places like Jacksonville, Philadelphia, yeah. Yeah. New Over. Jersey, anywhere that is, there is at least a majority black neighborhood, exactly. you see the devaluation and mm -hmm. it comes at a cost of almost fifty, about $50,000 on average. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about that further on in the conversation. Um, now it says, the committee identified the following underlying drivers of racial disparities in Savannah's housing market. And let me get back to the abdication yes, part. Yes, I'm going to get back to the abdication part because um, you know uh, and nothing against nothing against none of the past mayors. I'm just speaking the truth. I'm just speaking the truth. You know, you said it out your mouth just now. You can't blame it just on the state. No. It's on the city. Y'all, we in Savannah have had 
How many years of black leadership? Yeah. Yeah. How many years? This is a study that goes all the way back to 2000. We are now in 2023. So we've had, we've had Floyd, Otis, Edna. Skip over Eddie because Eddie was going to do what Eddie had to do for for Eddie. Okay. And Van. All right. All right. Now, out of all of those four African-American leaders, y'all, we ain't create no black millionaires. We, got we ain't create no businesses. Let me, let me add this we to ain't it. create, come on now. Let me add this to it. You remember, and, and my daddy taught me this, and you all know this if you're from Savannah. Not only did we not create it, we took it away because West Broad Street was what? Mm. Our, our economic that was, driver. That was the Black Wall Street. That yeah. was the Black Wall Street, that was yes. Black Wall Street. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. I am not sugarcoating it. You know, um, you, you could say the state didn't do what they were supposed to do, but doggone it, a whole lot of uh, black leadership didn't do what they something. were supposed to do either. Let me tell you you got to put the blame where the blame lies. I, I was, okay? I was sitting real quick. I was sitting with uh, Mr. Hudson, and Hudson, and he talked a lot about, Is that Hudson, you know. The Hudson Bob Shaw? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. People, good people. And talked about, you know, you had black folk that owned the cleaners. Yeah. The grocery stores. Mm -hmm. The convenience store. The this, the that. And, 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 and where is it? Where is it? Well, let me tell y'all this. I can remember uh, when Edna Jackson was the mayor. You know, you had people who had little businesses. Or children would cut grass in the summertime. Yeah. You know, you had the ladies that were selling thrills and candy and all that kind of stuff. That was little economic drivers in the community. Well, guess what? There was a ordinance that was put out that said, if you was just going to cut grass, you had to have a license. <laughs> I'm talking children now. Yeah. You know, if you were selling candy or thrills and all that kind of stuff, you could possibly get in trouble. And that's where an economic driver was for the black community. Well, that shows the, uh, that stuff hasn't changed, but I want to go back to the state abdication part because I wanted to make sure that my, my, my dates were correct because... We can't blame it on the state because Maynard Jackson was able to sit up here and move forward. And Come on, somebody. Come on, period. somebody. And uh, so Mary, Mary, Mary and Barry, D.C. That part. That's right. Uh, that, part. that part. And, and, and them, Maynard and Mary, Mary, them two there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, out of, and, and the rest of my, I can't even speak for like Coleman Young of Detroit. Right. And, and talking about New Orleans, with, with Mayor Jackson. Mm -hmm. okay, that was yeah. in the same state. So That's why right. was Atlanta flourishing during the same time under this, as opposed to this leadership here? So we can't put it on the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. That's a local situation. Yes. Let's, you know, it, it's time out for passing the buck off. That's right. And be real and have a real conversation right. within yourself that you failed the people, mm -hmm. you know? And you yes. are continuing to fail the people, but I'm sorry. Please finish. Okay, well. <laughs> and, and in reference to what you said earlier, today we talked, you know, uh, and like I told you, this this should be a mini Atlanta. Hmm. Oh, most this, definitely. This, this should be a this, most this should definitely. Be With the way Atlanta. the ports are, y'all, we ahead. generate more money in the state of Georgia second to Atlanta than anybody and else. And so we are we are black people Listen. in this city. We ain't got nothing to show for it under all of this black leadership. But then you got folk that want to get mad at me, Keisha and Bonetta, because we're talking about this kind of stuff. And we are asking the questions. Why is this happening? You know what I'm saying? They keep bringing and they're bringing in the other classes so they can make they have it where we don't need y'all. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes time to vote. Mm -hmm. They don't depend on y'all. Mm -hmm. That's why they keep bringing in all these tether classes and elevating over black people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, they, or they choose a token who someone who is exactly. safe. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, someone who will not rock the boat. You know, someone who won't tell the truth or is afraid to speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. And so then we end up in the same the funk situation where things don't change, things continue. And you know what I think what's happened, uh, Dr. Grimm, is the fact that people... Black people in Savannah have gotten so used to not having mm. and gotten so used to being 
uh, oppressed and saying, well, I, we ain't going to bother them white. We're going to let them white folk do what they do. I have heard it over and over again. Leave them white folk alone. But how could you say <laughs> leave them white folk alone when you paying into a system? You paying your money, black people. And, and, and not even that. Not and you starving. And not only that. Yes. This is what, what, and this is what made me come up here tonight. When you sit there and you look in the eyes of an 80, 80 year old elder who built for us to be here. Mm -hmm. And you got folk lying to them about little stuff. You get tired of seeing. I've seen that. Seven rooms with you. I've seven rooms with you. And I'm, like, I'm tired of seeing this mess. Y'all got people 80 years old who just want a pothole fix. But yes. it's about that disinvestment in places like Taylorville. Mm -hmm. Disinvestment in places like Camp Park so that you can come in and take them over. That's right. That's, 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 I said enough is enough. That's right. Okay, y'all, let me get to this. <laughs> the committee identified the following underlying drivers of racial disparities in Savannah's housing market. And y'all, we're not just talking about housing. We're talking about employment. We're talking about investment. We're mm -hmm. talking about black people not having what they need in order for us to get to the level of where we should be. I tell people all the time, I'm good, but never good. Keisha good. But when our people are not good, this is why you see us you fighting is hot. Come on, man. You say what now? How you taking a raise? How, how can you be comfortable with taking a raise when you know the, the garbage man who was on the truck, when he showed me his check, he got scary. a 17, no, a 37 cent raise. $15.37. They're all right with it the same way your Congress is all right with giving themselves, uh, to what, seven, <clears throat> eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 just like that. Mm -hmm. But they tell the people. Hmm. They tell the people. And, and once again, from the local from, from the local level all the way on up, mm -hmm. everything is, at, like you said, at the stroke. At the stroke of a pen. At the stroke of a pen. Okay, y'all, let me go back. The committee identified the following underlying drivers of racial disparities in Savannah's housing market. These are the disparities. Multi-generational income and wealth disparities between races in Savannah's population. Okay? An exceedingly inflated housing market pressured by a steadily growing population, particularly in the middle to upper middle income range. Yeah. Okay? A housing shortage caused by the aging and abandonment of existing properties coupled with the rising cost of labor and materials. Okay. Discrimination and structural barriers in the mortgage industry. Correct. Multi-generational loss of land and poverty, particularly among African Americans, resulting in a disparity in knowledge and comfort with the home buying process. Now that I totally disagree with. Let me tell you why I disagree with that. Because they're saying that we are afraid to go through the process that it takes in order to get a house. That's my that is a lie. Yeah, that's, that's crap. We don't have access to capital. Well, you don't have access to the system. We don't have <laughs> access. No, no, yeah, think about it. Yeah. Think about it. Because yeah. if you have an individual, yeah. like when I bought my property, mm -hmm. okay, I didn't go to a class. Yeah. I didn't have to go to a class. I went, I had a decent credit score, me and my ex-husband at the time. We had a decent credit score. We didn't have to put a whole lot of money down. I think I had to put five hundred dollars down or something like that. What was that a VA loan? That was a VA loan. And and see, that's a lot of the the. There are more concessions made for those who are veterans as opposed to, like even in this market, FHA loans are frowned upon at this moment. Mm. They'll work with an all cash buyer or someone who's doing a conventional loan as opposed to a FHA loan, even though it is backed by the um, federal government. Mm -hmm. And so that shows the racism in the mortgage process as well. Right. Um, and so I, I want to even talk about even the like you said the credit situation. How, you know, when you are barely making $15.37 an hour, mm -hmm. you know, you have a rent that's $1,200 an hour. How, you know, how can you pay your credit card bills to elevate your credit score? So then you're back in the situation of this poor tax that's being put on you because you have bad credit, because mm -hmm. you are poor. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's not even about the mortgage process. It's like, it's like my brother said, it's about the system. It's about the access to being able to have mm -hmm. um, the access, like you said, to cap capital to be mm -hmm. able to sustain yourself. But I want to go back to this point where you said um, 
uh, go read that point again. An exceedingly inflated housing market pressured by a steadily growing population, particularly in the middle to upper middle income range. Where those people coming from? All over. <laughs> but I can give you one. There's a whole bunch of scared parents. Oh, mm -hmm. Come on. So let's be yeah. real. Yeah. They're buying the properties on. here, allowing their children to stay in their properties for free, and when they finish, they come and take residence here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another situation that, it, it, a racist situation that council hasn't dealt with, mm -hmm. you know, or, or decides council not hasn't to dealt with it. anything involving SCAD, period. Yeah, yeah. Anything involving SCAD, period, council has not dealt with it. Okay. And you, t I don't know why, because we show sure talk about it. You know, I, I mean, I can't wait till Arthur Woman Gibson Carter becomes the mayor. Let's be clear. You said it. In the words of Nikki White, let's be clear. Because we're going to have those conversations <laughs> that for some strange reason, past administrations were afraid to have. Mm, things that make you say, hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Discrimination and structural barriers in the mortgage industry. Multi-generational loss of land and poverty, particularly among African Americans. Who let that happen? I, I'm sorry. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> Who let it happen? Who let it happen? Yeah. It happened on whose watch? Because we're talking about from 2000 to right now. Mm -hmm. That's 23 years. We've had 20 plus years of black leadership. Okay? That's, that's why I said we cannot... Blame white folk right now when we had the power. And, and let me let me add we this, had right. the power, Savannah. Let me add this because I've had conversations with multiple people around this particular leader, and they said, "Well, one person can't make all that change. One person can change policy. That's one right. person can craft policy. Mm -hmm. One person can influence policy." So yes. One person does sometimes have that authority to make these things happen through policy. Yes. And that's what I think our people don't get. Mm -hmm. It's not that people dislike a person. It's that they dislike their poor leadership and their, their, their bullying and their yes. manipulation. Yes. And that's what's dri driving me even more to just put my foot on the pedal. Because you're not going to sit here and disenfranchise my people, my, okay. my, my ancestors and, and, and my elders, because you don't like yourself. Mm. We don't do that here. Hmm. You know... You know you know, politics is warfare. Warfare is politics. That's, that's it. That's but it. And, and so that's and that shows up in you know having heated conversations, not arguments, but heated conversations yes. because you're passionate. And so that's where the whole decorum and this civility nonsense comes into play to to silence you all, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are being the voice for the people that you were sent to be, but at the same to token, uh, it's they don't want the true equitable, you know, leadership, the ones that are going to articulate what the people are saying and needing. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we come back to this place where we have the same, uh, the same situations continue to go in a circular manner mm -hmm. and, and nothing changes. I'm sorry. No, no, keep you good. You good. Okay. Y'all I'm trying to get through all of this. It's only a couple of more paragraphs. So let us get through this. Okay. Um, those earning 120% or less than the area medium income in Savannah are cost burden, meaning that they spend more than 30% of their gross monthly income on housing. Do they tell you what the median income is in there? The median income, when we looked it up, it was... Uh, Around 48. Uh-uh, 53,000. Oh, so it went up. Okay. It's 53,000. Okay. Okay. Um, it is believed that the vast majority of this segment of the population are people of color. <laughs> Home values in Savannah have increased by 7.3% over the past year and are forecast to rise another 10.1% in the next 12 months. <laughs>
ridiculous. Y'all, let me tell you something. This is why we stress voting for a rollback. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Voting for a rollback because when when you vote for the uh, increase in taxes, they try to say it's not an increase, but it is an increase because if your value go up, your that taxes. means your taxes go up. Okay. okay, we voted for we we stress the rollback, but you know the mayor and his and the majority. They said no, and then they had the audacity to brag about the fact that uh, that the taxes was at the lowest rate that it had ever been since eighty seven. That's a lie. That's lower. a bold face it lie. It could have gone lower. Yeah, it could have stayed where it was. Yeah, you understand. So y'all, let me say this: we ain't trying to be funny. We just being honest. We giving you the facts. Okay, now had the taxes not increased and the property values had not increased, then you might not have had as many people displaced. All right. Okay. But that's right. not just had we done the, the rollback, then the landlords wouldn't have had to say, "Well, you got to bite a uh, uh, renter. You got to bite the bullet." Because now my property taxes have increased mm -hmm. three, four hundred dollars and you got to pay it. But, but even though, even though the property itself, I mean, the, the taxes increase the value that the taxes stay where it was, the value of the property Increase a house that was a hundred thousand now has increased to three hundred thousand. Do you know you got three hundred thousand dollar homes in West Savannah? But check this out. Check this out, though. Check this out. Hold on. Check this out. But what it also does is somebody who's elderly on a fixed income. Now is displaced because I can't pay the property tax. That's right. So now I got to leave and go somewhere else. And mm -hmm. guess who gets to buy it? But mm -hmm. I was just saying, that's all by design. Yes. That's, that's why. So if you lose the house, then people from somewhere see they, they get them, they go, they go down to the courthouse, right? Mm -hmm. And people buy them up just like that there. Go in there, go in there, flip them, and sell them. Because guess what? Once they, and guess what? What are the odds? Most people are not going to come back within a year's time to make mm -mm. the property back. They ain't going to make the money. They don't, they, 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 they can't, well, they, they just can't said it earlier most, in this most conversation. Most people are robbing Peter to pay Paul sucker for it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Okay, Savannah has the second highest cost of rent in Georgia. Savannah has the second highest rent cost. The second highest cost of rent in Georgia. Leaving 55% of renters spending... More than 30% of their household income on rent and utilities. Over the past 10 years, the Savannah metropolitan area has added nearly 100,000 new residents. In the next five years, the city of Savannah is forecast to add about 6,000 new residents to its current population of 145,500. There are over 9,000 families on the waiting list for affordable housing at the Housing Authority of Savannah, 76% of which earn less than, wild guess. But we want to tear down Yamacro. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on, earn man. less than how much? Earn well, less well, than. Probably 30,000. But we want to tear down. Less than 20,000? 12,500. Mm -hmm. The waiting list has been closed since 2013. Make it make you sense. You got 9,000 people on a waiting list for affordable housing that make less than $12,500. And the housing list has been closed since 2013. But you got boarded up. But you got boarded up houses. Yeah. In Fraser Homes, in Fred Wessels, mm -hmm. in Yamacraw. And what's that one? Um, Caton oh, Holmes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. African Americans. <clears throat> it's all by design, y'all. African Americans account for fifty-five percent of Savannah, but ninety-six percent of Housing Authority of Savannah. Read tenants. that again. Read that again. I won't African that. Americans account for fifty-five percent of Savannah, mm -hmm. and I think it's more than that. I always say fifty-six point yeah. nine. Yeah. So that means you got this much of the power. Nine. Yeah. But this much. But 96% yeah. of Housing Authority of Savannah, our Housing Authority of Savannah tenants. So, I mean, that's so I mean, what the Housing other. Authority yeah. is doing now, right? They're outsourcing a lot of their new developments and partnering with these new developers and pushing those um, new places out to the, the suburbs mm -hmm. and 
places where, you know, the bus system doesn't run yes. and, mm-hmm. and there's no access to healthy food. So you, it, they, they continue to perpetuate it's the by, bottom. It's, it's by design. Yeah. And you know what? I went to a, a, I think it was a conference years ago. And from my understanding, they said that they give suggestions to housing authorities from the federal government. And it's not necessary that they use those suggestions, that they can model whatever they want to model for their community. And if they want to use the suggestions from the federal government, they can. Well, come to find out here in Savannah, um, a lot of the stuff that the federal government says that they can do, they are not doing it. So, and I want to bring light to this, and and I love my seniors, and I I, I want to preface it with this because my mom she would have been 106 on Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Oh wow! But and she doing. just died last year on my birthday. This your, this your mom? Well, yes. my grandmother. Yes, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so if you notice the affordable housing that is being built within the city limits, like mm-hmm. within Savannah City proper. That's senior housing. All senior it's, housing. It's not multifamily. And, and guess what? They don't even call it affordable housing anymore. They say you might as well stop talking about affordable housing. Everything is now based around workforce, workforce. housing. Yeah, or income base. Yeah. Mm, not even no, income no. base. Oh, really? really? Oh, They're no. not even talking about income base. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, uh, y'all, we're going to get through this okay. now. Go ahead, we're going to talk about it, but we're going to get okay. through it. <laughs> there are over 2,600 properties in Savannah that are currently unlivable and in need of repair and rehabilitation. Property owners find that deflated property values in low-wealth communities prevent home repair loans. That's stupid. That's fact. Yeah, but that's, that's that makes fact. No sense, though. Because yeah. if you go to the bank... <laughs> And yeah. you say, I got a house yeah. on uh, Comer Street or Cumming Street, and I want to repair it. Oh, no, we, we're not going to yeah. give you that. Yeah. But guess what? You got somebody that's coming from a transient, coming from Jersey or New York or whatever, and, and they say, okay, I want to redo this house. They could go to a bank, and they get the loan like let's, it ain't let's, nothing. Let's call it what it is. You're not white. Oh, okay, but come I'm, on. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> okay, l- listen to this. Go ahead. Okay, the legacies of redlining and other segregating forces have limited black borrowers' access to traditional credit and exposed them disproportionately to predatory lending sources. Y'all, let me tell you, that is so true. There was a house next door to mine. When the lady bought the house, she didn't have one mortgage. I ain't never heard of it. She had two mortgages. Mm-hmm. And in the city of Savannah, with the Dream Maker program, you have two mortgages. One that they give you, what, 30 years? If you're in the house for 30 years, you don't have to pay it back for 30 years, but you still have to pay it. That's a joke. You understand? They say deferred. And so I hate when it's deferred until 30 years. (laughs) You still have to pay it. So stop lying to people. Uh-huh. Because there, you know what I'm saying? Because there's an opportunity even, like you were saying, um, you can get a, a, a Chinoa loan, right? Mm-hmm. Where if you need assistance with down payment, as long as you stay in your home for at least two to three years and mm-hmm. make that your primary residence, that is forgiven. The city of Savannah with the Dream Maker program does not forgive your loan, so stop nope. telling them lies to these people. They're signing on for two loans. and they're- Two mortgages. Two mortgages, y'all. Listen. Listen. Go get you a Chinoa. If a you Chinoa. know what it is, I can tell you about it. Spell that so for me. C H E N O A, a Chinoa loan. So the Dream Makers has two, has two mortgages. It's two mortgages. It's, it's, two it's two not mortgages. a Chinoa, so it's not forgivable. Mm-hmm. It comes, you come, they give you another 10 years to pay that other loan off after you've done 30 years already. So it's like a 40 year sentence, right? So what if mama or daddy died in the process? I mean, think about it. Well, if mama or daddy died, then the house go back to that part. The, the house don't go to the family. Okay. And, and, and you know what? And I. C H E N O. Let it know Go ahead. Go ahead. I know that to be true. That's it. Yes. And I, I can't. I I know it to be true. Yeah. We know it to be true. Yeah. Okay. Now, twenty one point nine percent of the home ownership gap can be explained by differences in FICA score distribution between Black and White Americans. Listen to this. 
In 2019, 62% of mortgage applications submitted by black residents of Chatham County were denied, compared to only 26% denied to white applicants. Y'all hear what I just said? 62% of the mortgage applications were denied compared to only 26% of white applicants being denied. Okay. Only 1,160 black households applied for mortgages compared to 4,882 submitted by white households. Now y'all listen. This is in the 2040 plan. This is the stuff that's in this plan, y'all. This ain't something I'm making up. This ain't something Dr. Deidre Grimm is making up or Dr. Robert Bryan is making up. This is what is in this plan, okay? The rate of land ownership among African Americans has steadily declined since it peaked in 1910 through systemic stealing. Hmm. Hold on. Hmm. Loss of title. Hmm. Hold on. Denial of federal aid and prohibit pro prohibitive say say it, say it. Prohibitive. 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 Thank you so much. And pro prohibitive. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Pro Sorry, prohibitive. I'm, prohibitive. I'm, I'm Thank you. That's what, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly that's what, what it is. is. It's still true. Prohibitive. It's still from prohibitive. Yes. That's Stop. right. Okay, <laughs> prohibitive. That's a prohibitive yeah. laws. Okay, in Savannah, seventy-one percent of white residents are homeowners, and forty-eight point eight percent of black residents are homeowners. Yes, in Savannah. Can I insert something real quick? Go Can ahead. What's dangerous about this document is that same narrative is being designed used to design how the city looks in the future. Yes. Yeah. This is, yes. yeah. this is the 2040 plan yeah. Yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. A recent Northwestern University study found that racial gaps in mortgage loan denial in the U.S. have only declined slightly in the last 30 to 40 years. An MIT study calculated that the annual difference of $743 in mortgage interest payments, $550 in mortgage insurance premiums, and $390 in property taxes between black and white borrowers when invested over 30 years results in lost retirement savings of 67320 for black homeowners. You, you know, see the disparity? This is, this is what Dr. Claude Anderson has been saying. Let me tell you, you know me personally, I don't, I don't care if this whole system collapses because it's all a fraud. Hmm. It's all a fraud. It's about to. And, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, 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 How do you and say it? it? Babylon is yeah. falling. And, 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 you know, and, and, and they do it. They do it. And they, they know their time is up. And they do anything and everything to keep us. But you know what? You, you know? I, We got to stop. We got to stop. No, Let I me said, tell you why I, said, I say I, we got to stop. Because no. this mess was done under the watch of black folk. No, no, no. no. Listen, listen. We we, see, we, we can say under the watch of black folks. But under, but under this system, it's bigger than that. It's, I hear what you're saying, no, no, Maestro. No, no, hear, hear me, hear, hear. I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. And I hear you. You're definitely correct. Don't get me wrong. Because, you know what I'm saying, we, see, let me tell you something. That's like the minister said one time. You have the government and then you have a shadow government. Mm -hmm. That's a government <laughs> behind the government. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm hmm See, because cause when you see, no matter who's in place, but when, when, when we talk about this system, see, now you talk about banks and everything, mm -hmm. now we're now we, now we talking about this whole system. But guess what? The reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is because you just brought it up earlier. Uh, Maynard Jackson. Um, what's his name in, in D.C.? Uh, Mary. Uh, Mary and Barry. Mary and Barry. Yeah. yeah. They surpassed the system. Yeah. We here had... Four black mayors. You're right. You're right. You're that right. did nothing. And if they did, somebody please tell me. They did nothing. Because I have not seen it. They did nothing. We were no, there were no millionaires created. There were no hospitals created. Lord Adams did nothing. There were Otis, no Otis grocery stores nothing. created. And the Jackson did nothing. Nothing. And, 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 and the current one, nothing. 
I, talking about, let me let me give y'all and give people the viewers an example of what something looks like. Andrew Young. People talk about the reason why it wasn't just Maynard. Andrew Young had a vision, a vision, that's mm -hmm. important, remember that word vision, had a vision to grow that airport. Oh, that yes. was a major part of Atlanta's growth. Had he not taken that vision and implemented it? So that's what it takes. You talk about somebody got vision who's going to lead the correct way. That's an example of what Herman, vision and doing Herman, something looks like. What Herman, 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 uh, what Herman, Herman Russell, uh, Herman, Herman Russell, Russell came, came out, of, out of Maine. Look at yeah. that. Right. Mm -hmm. When Herman Russell came out of Maine, Herman Mus Russell created millionaires exactly. out of... And, but, for, and, and guess what? Guess what? That doggone arena project, that should have been the catalyst yes. to create millionaires. In our city, but you were on council. Who, who's the one to keep getting the contracts? Hmm. Get the legacy, the contract? legacy contracts. Yeah. Yes. And when you start seeing stuff, you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> she, she should run. She don't live in Savannah. <laughs> I wish she did. Okay, let me get let me get past this, y'all, and we almost finished. In Savannah, <laughs> wages are not keeping up with the increasing cost of housing. Demand for housing is outpacing affordability, and the racial makeup of home ownership does not reflect the racial makeup of our city. <laughs> By scanning the city's existing landscape of resources and a series of discussions about realistic alternatives to the status quo, the committee explored the following strategies to ameliorate the core problem. Ameliorate. Ameliorate the core problem. Each strategy can be implemented alone or with other strategies. Now, these are the strategies. Okay? <laughs> that was a stupid last sentence. But the, anyway. impl <laughs> the implementation of racial equity metrics in current housing programs in Savannah. The one now? The implementation of racial equity metrics in current housing programs in Savannah. Oh, that's very vague and, and has no real framework. Hold on. The expansion of existing home ownership programs at Housing Authority of Savannah. No teeth. Uh, when did the Housing Authority promote home ownership programs? <laughs> Again, no teeth. No, I, I guess no. there's sec Section 8. <laughs> no. Section 8. You, if you're on Section 8, you can, you purchase, can purchase a home, a home yeah. on Section 8. But uh -huh. do they even have, do they even broadcast that? That's the thing. Not Savannah Housing Authority. No, they do not. They do not broadcast it like they should. Okay, creation of a joint Chatham County and City of Chatham. Savannah online developers <laughs> toolkit. <laughs> toolkit. For the developer? That's cute. That's For, real uh, come cute. on now. That's developers real cute. toolkit. What what are they gonna do? Developers Teach them how to use um subpar um you know building <laughs> materials to keep the cost down? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, Listen to this. Make Incorporate it make sense. density bonuses into the city zoning code in areas already slated for substantial growth by the city of Savannah. Bam, baby. <laughs> density bonuses. So, are, are they? See, that's the thing. It does not spell out how is that going to tackle racial equity. You know what I'm saying? Density bonuses for black communities to stay black that they need to spell that out you know i don't like vagueness and stuff you know um i know maybe they only had a few words to be able to put on a bullet point but that's a whole bunch of bs and uh, go, go. but here's the gag where is the i want people to look at the, here's the gag where is the map i want to look at the 2040 map that's a system of white supremacy so guess what yes because guess what ain't none of us wrote that no no, 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 no. Well, who chair? And you know what? They won't put us at the table for it either. So, you know what I'm saying? Say, say the person say, with say, a doctorate in urban planning, say, public policy, and design, they did not want me at that table. Oh, so I'm just going to let you oh, know. Oh, you know, I got you, man. You know, you know I got you, man. Go ahead. So, oh, I, I, I asked, how could I be a part? But they didn't want that, you know? So, I, I'm just, I'm just when saying. Will, when, when, when will black people learn in a room full of white men, nothing ever comes good? But I'm sorry. I have to, I have to. Correct you all. Dr. Otis Johnson chaired this meeting. I see chaired this chaired. task force. So there were black, white, handpicked, handpicked individuals. Handpicked. With That's the, task the key force. word. Say, say, By who? Say, say it again. Handpicked. By who? And then, and then, and then yeah. the meeting after that was he at the meeting after that? <laughs> 
So, so the bottom line is, y'all. Uh, we, Where the we, map at? We talked we about. Oh, oh. oh no! The, the, what? You're going to the, the new zoo? Yeah. What is that? Oh, we can talk about the new zoo. Like Why you don't want to talk about the new zoo? Because Why you don't want to talk about gentrification? Yeah. It's don't get us to y'all. It's hmm? forced displacement. Somebody told me I shouldn't say forced displacement. Well, it Why? is. Because I, 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 I'm a fear monger. I'm bringing... F- well, it's forced displacement. It, it, <laughs> it, oh, it is oh, what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Call it what it is. Right. All that fear mongering and all that hell. You better wake up. That's right. Because you ain't going to have hours. And know what you're dealing with. We all Call it you're on the air. Now, I just wanted to say oh, that Lord. you just said that black people was in the room and you called Otis Johnson name. Otis Johnson has not been a black man in a long time. Otis Johnson, Otis Johnson has failed the people of this city just as Van Johnson has done. Otis Johnson really is running Van Johnson. Really. Johnson and Johnson. Listen, that people, we've been hoodwinked and sold some swamp land. And what we have to do is remember in November and get them out of there. That's all I want to say. And get Thank you, Carla. Out of there. That's all I want to say. It's always accurate, you know. Um, for, I wasn't here when... Um, uh, Dr. Johnson took his first office, but all I heard was great things about how he was a force for change. But when that second, you know, term came in, it, 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 it he became kind of demure. And so I can't speak to that because as someone who wasn't here, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like that's where, you know, they want to do to you all right they Mm -hmm. want that's what this whole civility clause they want to take that fight and inspiration and passion out of you all and water you down so you'll just continue to pass along the same rhetoric that Mm -hmm. has been going on and so um you know that's that's not going to happen because y'all aren't built like that and and that's what's scary to them right Mm -hmm. that's what's really scary honestly to some of your view not your viewership but other viewership because um, y'all are going to scream from the hills. Y'all are going from to... From the mountaintops. You know, pop firecrackers to get people's attention. Mm-hmm. Just like uh, our friend in... Um, is it Detroit? Eric? What's his no, name? Eric Mays. Eric Mays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. Yes. Oh, Eric, in Flint, Eric, Michigan. Eric, 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 my boy. It's time enough for them. Just yes. like they are. So, you know, they're afraid of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oldest, oldest, he, he was just like Barack. He was he was mm. he was something like a Barack because mm. same thing because Barack did nothing for black. People. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And anybody they can get up, they can try to say, oh this and that. that. I'm not going to tone wrestle with them and go back and forth. It's the truth is the truth. Mm-hmm. You know. And see, when we can speak freely like this, sir, this is what it is. You know what? But, like I said last night when I did, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go no, ahead. No, I apologize. No, 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 that's fine. But you you but, know what? Like I said last night when I did that video, y'all. I have been around the world three times and back. The world. And I come back to Savannah. I graduated high school here. Mm-hmm. I left, came back, brought my kids here and all that. And the same thing that was happening when I left this joint in the 80s is the same thing that's happening right now. And after I read this and I, we talked about it yesterday, I said, there's no hey, darn way. Hey, Recycle still lives, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, yes, I'm looking at your program from, you know, a distance. But um, talk about irony that the maestro should mention Otis Johnson and Barack Obama. Because it was the same Otis Johnson when President Barack Obama came here. Where did he take him to eat for lunch? Mrs. Wills, of all the places, you know, black places he could have gone to, he went there. And how about 
They were supposed to go to what? The Longshoreman Hall, but never got there. Again, they burned it off. To, uh, Chatham Steel. Yes. Um, yeah, two things. Uh, legacy of Boris Johnson. Well, he held doing what his administration, town hall meetings in the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. He took some photos out of council chambers and then put those monitors up. Uh, yeah, two legacies with him. And, oh, yeah, let's not forget, well, she's now representative up there in Atlanta, but Edna Jackson, truth be told, politically dyslexic. Uh, the woman came out to West Savannah, and the same one who's in the mayor's seat now. He was in another position when uh, Mr. D got shot. Mm -hmm. I believe the special interest groups told him after having seen Ferguson, oh, y'all need to go out there and cool them people out. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe would happen. Mm -hmm. So you, Bernetta, and Keisha, y'all speak truth to power, and you have power to speak your truth. That's right. And and Dr. Grimm is there. And I always say about um Dr. Bryant, when he gets there at City Hall now, he got his tool belt. He's going to be cutting red tape and everything right. and what have you. He got the toolbox, too. So y'all carry on. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Time. Thank you, Carla. And, that's, and, and for anybody else that wants to call in, 912-631-0731. And let me do the disclaimer, because I, sh I should have been the disclaimer. <laughs> what you hear on this podcast is not necessarily the opinion of yours truly, your host, Maestro RJP. It is the opinion of our guests. If they say something that you don't like, by all means, y'all, pick up the phone like these other two callers did. Call us. You know, you might change the mind of the person who said what it was. You didn't like what was being said. Or they may change your mind as well. Okay, so I, I, I totally forgot to say that because I got so engrossed in this conversation. But, um, y'all, when I tell you, you know, it, it just broke my heart to see that we still in the same same situation as black people that we were back in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Can I bring something up? Uh, just a, a caveat that your um, one of your counterparts, um, Alderman Lanier, would talk about is the fact that they use census tracts as mm -hmm. opposed to zip codes, right? Yes. That's, that's problematic because we don't come out for census like that, mm -hmm. right? So those numbers, like you said, it's probably 56.9 or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. So they need to stop using the census tracts because those are uh, you know, those are a moot point when it comes to our communities and even brown communities because we have a, a disdain and a mistrust for the system uh, because it never translates back. No. But I also want to bring to your point, um, people all, uh, we have some friends that say Trump did more for black folks or whatever. Sure. Um, but I, I want to talk about that. You talked about that stroke of the pen. Trump mm -hmm. did use that stroke of the pen, yes, right, did. to get some things done. Mm -hmm. But at the same point, to what detriment, right? Yes. He continued. Well, well, he, he, he closed out the mm -hmm. um, census before it was That's time right. to close it out. Yeah. You know, so there's not an accurate reading. He, he, he used his bullet pulpit. That's it. Yes. That's and, it. And that's what Barack could have done. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's what he could have done. But you know what I, I noticed? Every time... Except for for uh, Marion Barry and um, Maynard Jackson, black people get in positions of authority. It's like they forget who the heck put them there. I don't get that myself. They it's they scary. get scared. They get scared to use the authority that the people has given them. I don't understand that. Well, I, I do. And here's, here's a part of it. They forget to go back and connect with those people. When you are elected with a, by, by representatives, you stay engaged. You meet with them. You talk to them. You continue to listen to them. Don't just show up when it's time to get a vote. No, I beg to differ. And the reason I beg to differ mm -hmm. is because somebody, and I say this mm -hmm. often, somebody must be take the, the mayors in a back room. It's called a and check. tell them. A check. No, no, not I even think, a I check. Think some, uh -oh. They put fear in them uh -oh. and tell them if you do anything expose for this. black people, we're going to expose this. We're going to take this. Uh -huh. We're going to do this. And you know what? I don't know if they've taken the the brown bag or no. what the plane rides, the train that's, rides. That's, or, I don't understand that. That's why they didn't you like know? That, that brother. And I'm switching, going to like, like the judges and that brother in, uh, in the Kentucky, Louisville, that brother, the judge Olo Stevens, 
Mm -hmm. that, that, that brother Olo Stevens, you know what I'm saying? See, oh, that, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why, that's what they didn't like about him. And see, whenever you do something, they do in and everything to get you out of there. Mm-hmm. They do in and everything. Yes, they do. But but you know what? That's why I say I don't give a goddamn who it is. I don't want your money. Right. Yeah. I don't want your pats on the back. I don't want your plane rides. You I don't want your oh, 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 oh. Keep, oh you know, keep all that bull crap. Do yeah. right by and for the people. Right. The black people, Asian, Latino, the lost, the least, the left out. I don't give a damn. Dern, excuse me. <laughs> Apologize. That was a demon. If you, if, if, if you put one penny yeah. into taxation in this city, doggone it, you get a return on your, your investment. investment. And right. that investment return should be equitable. Equitable. Right? And so, yeah. you know, no. we have to move past this notion of equality because we are not treated as equal citizens, no. right? No. And, and the, the bar, even though it sets higher for us, Ooh. the access to that bar is even lower, lower. for us to, exactly. get, us to get to, right? And so um, there's this whole model where, you know, in, in explaining equity to people is meeting where they are so that they can get to that the level of attainment mm -hmm. and um i think a lot of us you know fail to realize that we uh, i'm i'm not gonna say us but you know white folks and i'm just gonna be very transparent mm -hmm. like even in some of the settings that i'm in they believe that 15 dollars is is adequate money and i'm like how do you think that that's adequate? They believe fifteen dollars is adequate for you, but right. doggone it for them. That's right. It can't be fifteen. Forty-five, thirty, fifty. Okay. Thank you so much. Um and 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 on the back of it. On the back of it. Back of it. Okay, uh uh, I got uh -huh. it. I got it. Not this is what I was looking for. Oh, okay. This is what I was looking for. Okay, um, 15 for a person of color mm -hmm. or a person that they consider beneath them mm -hmm. is fine. Right. But you making 100,000. Hello. You making 150,000. But you, you, you think it's okay. That's why I, I, I went hard for our city employees to get that increase in pay. They won't, they won't, you black know, folks, they won't black folks. To work the maximum, we get paid the minimum. Yes. Why they work the minimum, we get paid the maximum. Say that yes. again. Uh, they, Say it again. They, Say it they, again. Want, they want black folks to work the maximum and get paid the minimum. Why they work the minimum and get paid the maximum? See, they want us with a hump in our back. That's it. That's they it. want Negroes with a hump in their back. Because they know they fifteen dollars is seven dollars an hour. All right. But and, and that's the thing, right? They they seven dollars and twenty five cents. Yeah, to be exact. that's what it is. They don't talk and then, about and then tax oh, oh, oh. And, all, and all these jobs <laughs> that talk about their hiring, but they never talk about the pay. Oh, that's what about right. the benefits? Though? Everything go up except wages. What that's about the benefits, right. though? Come on, man. That's right, exactly. y'all. I'm so glad about benefits. I'm so right. glad he bought this. I I want to read this too. Um. As the economy recovers, it is important to consider the specific impacts from the COVID-19 and needed methods to reduce any future impacts and improve resilience of the local economy. Trends. The COVID-19 accelerated the practice of remote working for most organizations. Businesses have invested in employee and customer safety. Restaurants and retail have pivoted to providing outdoor services and options for online commerce and may have accelerated the adoption of virtual health care. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. You ain't got to go to the doctor no more. You tell the doctor what's wrong. He prescribed you something. I did that the day before I came here. Oh my God. Okay, I want you to look and tell you. <laughs> you feel a no, nausea? Don't touch me. Don't touch huh? me. You gonna take don't some blood me. or something? <laughs> but anyway, <No>. equity. <laughs> equity. Multiple racial and ethnic groups were disproportionately impacted by unemployment in 2020. Mm -hmm. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the seasonally adjusted unemployment rate for black or African Americans jumped, now we're talking about seasonally employed, jumped from 6% to 16.7% between February and May 2020 before dropping to 9.9% .9 in December. By contrast, seasonal employment, unemployment, 
for white individuals grew from 3% to 12.3% in the same period and dropped to 6% by December 2020. It is estimated that COVID-19 will have disproportionately impact, impacted black, indigenous, and people of color. That's what that BIPOC, BIPOC. Mm -hmm. is, okay? Um, own small businesses. A recent report from the Service Corps of Retired Executives score notes that blacks and Hispanic business owners were more likely to apply for forms, y'all, this way it get good, of financial assistance than white business owners, but less likely to receive it and more likely to report negative business impacts as well as a result of remote work measures compared with white-owned businesses. Prime example, ARPA funds, CARES Act money. Yes. The CARES Act money. Can I say something? That was misappropriated, but go ahead. Can I say something? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and we're going to talk about that CARES Act money, too. I'll say it again, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I say this, stuff. With this black and brown. Mm -hmm. Because everybody else comes over and gets elevated over us. Exactly. So I'm um, so, so they see they see they throw the, they, they try to throw the, you know, with the black and brown, but it's just black. Mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. we, we got to cut with it and stop, you know, with this you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because guess what? Look 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 how look, look, look how they do with everybody else. Mm -hmm. They get elevated. You you got do you do you know and do you know and like in Utah and uh in California they don't even have they don't even have to have license. No. They're getting all the benefits and everything. Yes. Yeah. Stuff yes. that we as black people work every and pay taxes. Excellent. Can't get the, the, the homeless population. And that's the start of Savannah in every city across America. Who you think is the highest? Us. Uh, yes. Us. So mm -hmm. them that see all, all, all that's that's to make it look like when they say with the black 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 and brown. No, no, no. That, once again, and there is no black and brown coalition. Mm -hmm. We have nobody. No. We are all we got. Yes. The black man, the black woman is all the black man got, and the black and 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 and, and, and we are all the black woman got. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I, I want to speak to the point where you were talking about, um, you know, the separation, right, and lumping that all in. Prime example, and I had an argument with somebody else about this. Mm -hmm. um, this Asian hate bill that was easily passed. Thank you. But we you couldn't get the police reform um, George Floyd bill passed. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Thank like you. so, uh, you know, it, it's not me saying that I have some animus towards anybody else. But why the heck that we can't get something that exactly. is, is vital to us, especially when we were the catalyst for civil rights, mm -hmm. because nobody else would have any they rights if it wasn't for bill. us. That part. They didn't even pass the Emmett Till bill. bill. Okay, they didn't you know? even pass the lynching bill. Yeah. No. 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 Okay, let me read the rest of this. A report from the Federal Reserve Bank shows that BIPOC owned businesses were nearly twice as likely to be classified as at risk or distressed in 2019, pointing to structural barriers that influence issues such as financial health and if a business is able to accumulate significant cash reserves. And y'all, I always say this. If we put into our black communities, our poor and impoverished communities, the same thing that we put in our affluent communities, you will see. Sometimes we, we as black folk are resilient people. Right. right. You give us five, we going to make 55. That's right. That's right. Okay. But you don't put nothing in. Listen. Out of 42 businesses that got the opera funds, only two, and this was under our watch, under the administration, under this administration, only two black businesses, one foundational and one non-foundational got the loans. The rest of them went to white and Asian folk. Okay. But you, you said right here, and, and these terms, right, at risk and distress in mm -hmm. 2019, those are terms that they use in the redlining tactics, Exactly, right? yes. So, so we're, we're also pointing back in 2019 who is deserving and who is not deserving of mm -hmm. these funds. So it's also convoluted to, to make sure that those terminologies still stick when you're thinking of, as they say right here, BIPOC business. Mm-hmm. 
And, um, you know, I, I like to talk about how, you know, in, in, in gender and race studies, right, um, there are Caucasian facing um, Hispanics, they're Caucasian facing Arabs, and they check the box for Caucasian. Mm -hmm. There are yes, black they facing yes, they um, yes, Latinx they people, and then there there are black, black facing Arab people. Well, you even got the ones from the, from the the, uh, the, the the diaspora Africa, right? They they, they consider they, they check white, white, mm -hmm. right? And those ones they will check their box for Hispanic and Mexican. They won't check the black box. Mm -hmm. So you know it, it's like we have this stain. On us, and, and I'm sorry, I know you had a call. And, and you, know what, Dr. No. Graham, you know what, Dr. Graham, as you say to them, but you got a lot of blacks, even from the Dominican, that's it, Puerto Rico. They don't say that. No, they, 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 they don't, they, they're not black. No, they say they, they're Hispanic. They, yeah. they, they, they take it out right out, mm -hmm. and, and they ready to, I done seen it, and they ready to defend it. That's it. You even got brothers and sisters, I don't even like to call them brothers, they, they're from Haiti, they take it, they're not black. Hmm. They Correct. consider themselves mm -hmm. Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Or other French. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a brother, oh, yeah. I had a bl black guy, the, the call of this tablecloth from Haiti. He said, you say he told me you feel it? I'm not black. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But one thing about one thing about America, go to America and the system of white supremacy, which is the biggest system on the world and is in the world and is global. In America, well, they'll show you. Okay. Caller, you're on, you yeah. on the air. Let me see what they say. Caller, you're on the air. JP, you ready? To talk about what we talked about earlier. Caller, you're on the air. Yes. I'm calling to remind people who must remember in November that Curtis Perti called. Our black queen, a ghetto black bee. You must also remember Nick Colombo have never voted no time ever in the interest of our people. Every time there's something for black people, Nick Colombo voted against it. So we need someone to run against Nick. We also need someone to run against Dietrich Leggett. Uh, we have to, we must remember November that Curtis Purdy can never get back in that seat for disrespecting our queen. And that's what I call for. I agree. Thank you, Carla. And if I may comment on that, let me tell people why that's so important. Mm -hmm. Each of us have African American black mothers. So when you said, I'm just, I wanted to say this Curtis Purdy was so on. So when you said that to, to Keisha Gibson Carter, you said that to my mama, to my grandmama, to my black sisters. And so God help me, we're going to remember November. That's right. And, and also, y'all, I want to say this right here. Um, I, I, I had the opportunity to participate in, for the very first time in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Very first time. And... I found it real interesting. We, the city of Savannah, expended $267,000 to that event, to that festival, okay? We don't expend that kind of money to nobody else, to that, no, nobody else, y'all, nobody else. So, as I'm riding around, getting hoarse, waving at the people, you know, and I must say, I enjoyed it. I really enjoy right. connecting with the people, waving at them, what have you. Y'all, all I saw was money. <laughs> all I saw was dollar bills. There is no reason. I'm not answering you. There is no reason why no community in the city of Savannah, no reason why no community should be without. When I tell you I saw millions, heck, I could even say billions of dollars in this city on Saturday, on Friday at that parade. I saw so much money and I saw, and, and the reason I saw the money, because I saw all the green. Huh. There's a whole <laughs> lot of green in these streets, baby. Nobody can tell me that we don't have resources to help our poor and impoverished communities. If you tell me that, I'm going to tell you you're a liar. And well, you're a bald-faced liar. You have a good point, right? 
Why are we celebrating St. Patrick's Day? Oh, it's, oh, really, it's, you're, celebrating, you're celebrating genocide. That's it. Okay. And that's the problem. Of the pygmy. No, uh, you call the twelve the people. The twelve people. The, 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 they, the, all, the, they call them yeah. pygmies. The pygmy. The pygmy. The pygmy. Yeah. 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 But that's what you're celebrating. Yeah. yeah. You're celebrating genocide. Yeah. Any, any black pygmy. person that gets out there and celebrates St. Patrick's Day, just that's, and, and don't, don't take my word. Do the research. Do your research. You're celebrating genocide. Yeah. Because snakes couldn't logistically get to Ireland. Yeah. How you know? So he didn't drive any snakes out. No. He drove black folks out. Yeah. So when you Tell celebrate history, when you celebrating St. Patrick's Day, you're celebrating possibly the genocide and and killing of your own ancestors of our, of our own people. That's it. That's Not right. possibly. Oh, no. right. I'm saying possibly your ancestors. At, but yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you know what? And I can't. I and I would have to say that I can put myself in that shoes because I know my last name McNaught is a Irish last name. Mm-hmm. But I don't celebrate that not, not, that nonsense I was about to cuss because I know <laughs> for a fact that my people were not my 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 people were not wanted there. Mm-hmm. So you know, no. So, but but you know what? What and, I and, what and I can when, say when they talk about leprechauns, uh, because that was the big me. They're talking about the big me. But you know what I can stop, say? Yo, stop. No, because they were yes. fake kids. Yeah. You didn't um, know. No, not. My son is very fair skinned with red hair. That's what it. They were fair skinned and dark skinned pygmies. Yes. No, mm-hmm. but but you know what I did notice? I did notice this much, and and I must say the internet is waking us, yeah. black folk up. I didn't see a whole lot of black folk that were participating. Now you had some, but not as much. As it used to be okay. from back in the day. It used to be so many, you know, African Americans celebrating St. Patrick's Day. But mm-hmm. I'm going to say this for the ones that did, I want to see y'all celebrating Juneteenth. That's well, not right. only that, I, I want to see you celebrating Juneteenth because Juneteenth is the true independence. June 19th is the true independence day of African Americans um, um, being released from slavery. Okay? And, and check this out. And since we got so much money in the city of Savannah, city manager and leader, uh, I want us to do the, we need to fund the film that Benny Mitchell Jr. did on his daddy, who was one of the precursors to why we even have an MLK parade, to why we even have MLK Boulevard. He has done a beautiful documentary on his dad, and the city and its behind the scenes crooks are blocking that young man's, and we grew up together, so we need to, we need to have that what film. What do you mean? Let's, so Benny detail. Mitchell Jr. has been I've seen blackballed. The film. Right, he's I've been blackballed the by the city. to showing it. We should have been the first people to show that film. He showed it. Where at? He showed that film in, um, where did he show it at? In one of the theaters. This is when he first did As a city sponsor supported it. Oh, no. That's no, what I'm I saying. Don't, I don't think so. Okay, but we can put how much at that parade. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He might have screened it, but the city needs to get fully behind it, and let's that's, that's, that's put it out there. That's our history. That's the city's history. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not taking anything from what you said about funding Juneteenth, but you also need to fund the weeping time. The oh, weeping yes. The weeping time, time, yes. Of course, definitely the weeping time. Yes. Y'all, let me tell you something. That's why it's so important that y'all get to the polls and y'all vote and vote like your life, your history, your legacy, your heritage depends on it. Yeah. And I okay. Want, and I want to speak for the old woman right now because everyone says, "Why is she always talking about black, 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 black?" Well, black people, unfortunately, we are at the bottom of the barrel yes. in most cities, right? Mm-hmm. And so, when black people are lifted up, as a result, everybody is lifted up. Thank you. So, let's talk about that and make sure that we are not saying that she's polarizing or she is being um, biased because we cannot be racist. At the end of the day, she is trying to ensure that our generations that are coming after us have what they need to sustain yes. themselves. Yes. Um, she said, what is the number, number to call yeah. in? 912-631-0731. 912-631-0731. JP, you can put it in the um, comments. You speak yes. Yes. 
No, no, no. Yeah, person, it's, 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 no black person by definition can be racist. Right. No. No. Right. Pretty Pretty definition, but not racist. But never racist. And and we talked about that earlier today. Um, there's a difference between racist, prejudice, and discrimination. That's it. That's you know, racist systems. Uh, black folk, we can't be racist. I want to. And let me talk we about this real quick. We can't be racist. Be we don't own nothing. Yeah, yeah. Let, me no, talk, let me. We don't call. have. Get call. <laughs> no, I'm 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 going to talk real quick about this <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. because there's a difference between. Racial equity. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, so let's. I, I want people to do their research as to why it's important that we have the word race inside of these quote unquote DEI statements yeah. mm -hmm. and and get back to REI as opposed to DEI. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Like so it. tell them what is DEI and REI. REI is racial, ethnic, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Diversity, equity, inclusion is DEI. Mm -hmm. It waters down the whole premise of it because racial equity is there to tackle the biases and prejudices that black people specifically and the atrocities that we have experienced in this um, this nation. Mm -hmm. Diversity brings in everybody else. That's right. We believe that everybody else deserves a fair shot. But we need our chance first because everybody else has been getting off of our backs in the first place. That's right. So, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. That's Call. right. Caller, right. you're on the yeah. air. Hi, yes. Um, I was calling in regards to um, as far as talking about the monies that's given out, you know, for just us having the St. Patrick's Day Parade. In the city of Savannah, there are a lot of homeless people. Oh. And I know firsthand that it's hard to get funding from the cities to help certain organizations to give people adequate living situations. I know we've talked about as far as taxes, you know, for property taxes and everything, but and we've talked, you talked about a lot of things, and I thank God for you covering a lot of situations, but it is a very big epidemic that's going on in Savannah that is being untalked about, and it's really not being helped by our city council. Mm -hmm. well, and here it is. What, what, what are you talking about? As far as helping certain organizations, for instance, Healing Heart Ministries is an organization that is ran by Belinda Jones, and she has gone out and she's helping people trying to find adequate living. Let, for let me people tell you. Let me are, tell you this right here. I'm gonna stop you right there. Let me tell you why I'm gonna stop you right there. In the past, it was all the legacy. Uh, uh, organizations, yeah. organizations non-profits, non the legacy. You had to know somebody in order to know somebody, just like right now, okay? You got to know somebody to know somebody to even get <laughs> uh, uh, funding, okay? I saw where you know the people doing the work, but this one person, you know, you got 49,000 painting faces and that kind of stuff. When it do All that. right. Then you got another one that that <laughs> supposedly had a, a mentoring organization. You know, it's baby. Let me tell you something. That's why you have to. Oh, I'm gonna call it like it is. I don't think well, I what about the like it. On no. That's why. What about the that's on why on you gotta make sure that the right no. people, <laughs> the right people. Lord. It's in the seat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, you got to make sure that the people who have the people's best Listen. interest at hand is in those seats. You got to remember in November to get your butts to the polls and vote for the right people. I don't give a darn how much heck we raise. Baby, like I said it, I said it before, and I'm going to say it now. If I don't get back in that seat. I'm good. If Keisha don't get back in that seat, she good. If Bonetta don't get back in that seat, she good. So if we good, that means what? Who we fighting for? Right. We fighting for the hood. That's why it's important yeah, you know. to get back in those seats. Can I speak to what the caller saying? Yes, ma'am. So, go right um, ahead. Caller. I'm sorry, caller. I just, I just had to, to tell you yeah. What it really, really is. We can't even get so, our okay. phone. Well, I'm sorry. No, no. So the caller, 
what happens is is that they have these um, guidelines and parameters that they have to go through the process. And so these legacy nonprofits have already been through this process. They have a track record and this relationship with the city that other nonprofits may not have, like Ivory Bay, right? So I understand exactly what you're saying, um, caller. While you have been out here doing the work and you are, or Miss Belinda has been going yes. to the highways and byways directly affecting people and changing their lives um, these other organizations because they have um, you know these uh, these quote unquote stature in the city they are able to tap in all of the funds and not just get funds from the city but also from the county right mm -hmm. they're able to go back and ask them to change their budget to increase their budget right mm -hmm. and, th and that's not even looked at and scrutinized as opposed to your application that will be raked over the coals and said okay well we're only going to give her 10 thousand dollars for all the work that she's been doing. Now we ain't gonna give her nothing. Kind of like liquor license. Oh my bad. Go ahead. Oh, oh the problem. liquor license. I don't That's go there. My bad. My bad. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, we can hey, talk about it. Hey, we can saying. talk about it. I'm and we be talking about disparity <laughs> for towards African Americans uh -huh. in a city that is the majority African American. How in the heck? How in the heck? Do we not have nothing? That's the part. How do we not? Dr. Grimm. Nothing. Dr. Bryant. Not a thing. Because we're going to act up. The majority. <laughs> and they always say, oh, oh we the minority. Hmm. How the heck we could be the minority? That's an oxymoron. How the heck we could be minority and majority? Mm -hmm. And majority. Mm -hmm. We are the majority. See, if, if people, see people don't understand mm. trick, trick language. Like the word minority. Mm -hmm. Did you know that white women were uh, 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 minority? Okay then. Right. Yeah. Of course. And they've been. The That's ones how they could get the DBE. Right. Yeah. That you know they they get the uh, the contracts and all that stuff. That's why that, 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 that goes back to what you yes. said. That's why that word diversity yeah. becomes so important. Right. Mm -hmm. That works for what? See. There you go. And, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 That's how it works. They can't see themselves giving black only black people something. They got to include everybody else. Well, you no. know what? That's the fault of black people. No, 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 That's, no. Let no. me tell you why. Listen, listen. Just uh -huh. let me. Just hear me out. The reason why, when we have anything, I have seen it over and over and over. We have a, a organization. We want to invite everybody. We want to include everybody in our organization. Even when we did the Juneteenth celebration, they told that committee that they had to bring diversity. But when I went to see the, the Indians down there uh, at Eastern War. Native Americans. Uh, no, oh, it wasn't. Oh, a, oh, uh, no. About the Hindu the, the, Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. the yes. Hindu fest. Yes. I ain't seen none of us. Yeah, you know that. what I'm saying? But the point that I'm making is we as black people got to stop wanting to include everybody in everything that we do. I mean, bottom line, you can't come in my house everybody can't come and to tell me how I'm supposed to live. <laughs> yeah. And for some strange yeah, yeah. reason, white folk think that they have to go in and, and always tell black people how to live. Even mm -hmm. with the, even with the, um, the canal district. That's Ooh, it. Don't stop Even me with that. the canal district. That's Hold on, let me finish. That's with the out. canal district. They want to go and tell those people in that community what Maybe. they should and should not do. And that made me so angry. It's like they're, <laughs> sa they're saviors. You, you, know, you don't have to always be a savior, white folk. White people like to tell, they don't like to be told. Well, yeah, it's, it's history. And, 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 hold on, Robert. Mm -hmm. Robert, Robert. That's in their nature. You, 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 you ever notice in all the when you in all the movies, they all see they destroy everything in the world. That's why in the movies they always got to be uh, they always got to be the, the savior or the hero in the movie. And everyone they got to be the savior because they destroy everything in real life. Facts. That's a fact. Everything in life they destroy. Anywhere on this earth. And, 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 and I don't care what nobody say. Anywhere on this earth, anywhere that they go, they leave a stench. Mm. Because that's, that's all it does is destroy. They leave I'm, anywhere I'm on this earth, they leave a stench. I'm talking to my people. I'm talking to black people. Black people, listen. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up. 
in Savannah, Georgia. Okay? It's time for us to stop being left out of the equation. It's time for us to stop saying, oh, just leave it alone. Let them white folk do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. No, man. You have a right. You right. have a right. Pay into right. the system. Yeah. Even if you don't pay into the system, you here. You got a right. You, you <laughs> have a right, right to and enjoy. You have a right to enjoy life like everybody else. You have a right. Stop saying that. Stop just depending on. Hold on, call. I'm coming. Stop just depending on uh, the people that you put in the seat to 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 do for you. Start researching the stuff yourself. That's right. That's it. Okay. Start getting engaged in what's going on for yourself. Because out of twenty plus years, we put our trust. In folk, they ain't did nothing for us. Carla, you're on the air. Good evening, older woman. Good evening, guests. Good evening. I want to start off by saying that. Good evening. Let's let's take it down. Good evening. <laughs> um, Michelle Wilson, I've, I've, seen, I've watched your show several times. I've commented on your post today about the 2040 mm -hmm. uh, study. I want to say that I get everything you guys are saying, but there's only one thing that I have not heard tonight. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the problem, but what is the solutions? There are so many problems out here, but what are the solutions to get things taken care of? I just told you what to do. I, I got you. you. Look, Make sure you get wait, to the wait, polls wait. and you vote the right I got person you. in. Make sure that you, you get engaged and get involved. And make sure you. that the people that you send down there is going to do what needs to be done for you and your community. Right. And if they don't Indeed. do it, don't be afraid to call them out. Right. And you are so correct. I also want to put this out there. Mm -hmm. I am a former supervisor and code compliance officer with the city of Savannah. Mm -hmm. The issues that you're talking about as far as property, property being taken, uh, blighted taxes and everything else. I have offered my services to other elected officials. I'm mm -hmm. not going to put their names out there. No and I was told by them, I mean, I can, I, it's not like I'm employed with the city anymore, right. but I was told we have employees who can take care of that. No, you have employees who are still under your thumb that don't give a f excuse my friend mm, yeah, about the community don't yeah, they the don't right care now. about the community mm -hmm. i'm not from here i'm from marietta georgia mm -hmm. i fell in love with this city i fell in love with the community i fell in love with how much love i got from savannah versus a big city right I made it my mission when I started working for the city. The reason why I accepted the job, applied for the job, yeah. is because I believe if you want to make change, you put yourself in a position to do something. Amen. That's right. Yes, That's right. That's okay. Right. So in a matter of three years, from 2018 until 2022, I climbed from $12.71 to an hour as a meter maid mm -hmm. into a supervisor position. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Once I finished dealing with all the red tape and, oh, we don't do this, but we jump when this core item comes down the pipe because it's time for somebody to be voted in again. So now they want to care about their community. <laughs> By the time I got done, well, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. By the time I got done with all that and I still looked at the citizens that were coming into my office where I was a supervisor at and they had no idea how to begin to fill out the paperwork, mm -hmm. understand the violations, anything. I quit. Mm. I quit a $50,000 a year job in June 2022, started my own business, and I still go to random neighborhood meetings and listen at these neighborhood association meetings and make sure whatever citizen stands up and needs help with their property, they're this, they're that, anything that I know I can help or connect them to the right people or even mm -hmm. fill out the paperwork for them, I do that for them. Awesome. Awesome. Can what you I want your listeners to know tonight. Did what you do, where exactly. you be? and you know what the beautiful thing is, you can do that and still get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Oh you yeah, know, and, our and I do. Very well. Centers, our community centers yes. should be flourishing. Really? Oh yeah, I do. I do very well. With people with 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 
Lights. Yes, I do, I, and I and I I am paid very well. I'm paid more than that fifty thousand dollars I left. Okay, all right. Let's put it that way for myself with my schedule, how I want to work. Come on now, okay. look at God. I like it. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying tonight is I'm not I'm not even going to tell you the name of my business. We can talk about that later. I didn't call to advertise myself. What mm-hmm. I call to do is offer my help. Okay. If anyone needs help, property maintenance, trying to figure out these violations, these ordinances, how to fill out paperwork, I understand that everyone's level of comprehension is not the same. Right. Okay? We have age gaps. We have technology gaps. I am here to help fill that gap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If anyone who's listening to this or may see it later on, if you need me, call me. I'll leave my information with you once this uh, cast is over, this podcast is over. Mm-hmm. I'll leave my information with you. Send them to me. I'm here to help. All right. That is one way that we can begin to help this community. It's not what you know down here. It's who you know. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Come on now. That's one thing now I've learned it, down it's here. It's not what you know. It's who you it's know. It's not what you know. It's who you know down That's here. Right. That's right. Versus in a big city, it's what you know will get you in the doors to who you need to know. That's oh, no, right. not down here. Okay. I had to learn. <laughs> yeah, I learned moving to Savannah. You have to know people in order to get yourself in a position. That's right. So people will know you. Once you've done that... You got the key to the city. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if you're not showing up to these city council meetings, if you're not showing your faces at these neighborhood association meetings, if you're only showing up when it's time to vote, if you're only caring about your neighborhood when it's time to get those votes. Okay. Who are you? Why do we need you here? Come on now. That's what I'm talking I don't need about. you. But see, unfortunately, the way my mouth is set up and the way my heart and my drive is set up, I was too much for the city. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And guess what? I talk back. Yeah. I've always gotten from right. that. I talk back. That's what we need. Okay? We need I talk back. that's not afraid yeah. to speak. No, up I talk back. Out. But see, when I talk back, I back it up with receipts and research. I read. Yeah, I study. I, I research. Always tell them a smart make a big number. But don't, don't make, make a number. With, the, with that being this said, it, I'm not going to hold up the line. I'm not going to hold up the line, but if you need me, like I said, I if if you want me to, I'll send a text to this phone and leave you my information. Put up, put up, I appreciate it. Information. I'm here to help the community. No, she don't want to put her information in the comments. I mean, I can, but like I said, I'm not calling in to promote my business. She's not calling I'm calling, in to, calling to, to help her business. No, I'm not using your platform to promote my business. I want to help. Oh, but you know what? You can promote your business because we promote black owned business. I'll say less than. Say less than. I got you. Okay? Say less than. I got you. Y'all, I'm sorry. It's 10 o'clock. It's yeah. 10 o'clock at night. Hey, we keep on going. I keep saying. As a matter of fact, it's 13. We gonna be long, but we ain't gonna we gonna be strong, but we ain't gonna be long. And and every time I got you, I got you. Every time JP and Maestro say that's not true, and it turns out that it ain't true. Okay, but what what I'll do is I'll send you the information and I'll let you repost. This is your podcast. I will send. Post it in the comments. Post it in the comments. Go right ahead. All right, I got you. I got you. Your information, anything you want to put in there, put it in there. All right, y'all. Listen. Uh, All right. Have a good evening. You do the same, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Please, by all means. For all my folk out there, I hope you can read my shirt. Right, it says my rate went up. Never let anyone devalue your work, your craft, your That's research, right. whatever it is. Your price is your price. Mm-hmm. And you name your price. You know, don't haggle with anybody that they just can't afford you. Move on to the next person. Somebody else will be able to afford you. That's right. And number two, I'm going to say in the good words of all the all the woman, Bernetta Lanier, the city of Savannah, you need to count to five. You have three people who are at large who are doing the bidding for all of the city. That's Alderman Miller Blakely, Alderman Gibson Carter, and your mayor. So, therefore, you should have at least have four people, which mm-hmm. is your district representative, voting on your behalf. Yep. If you do not, 
That means that there's something wrong and you need to pay attention to that. And then in all, and then going forward, you need to vote this brother in. Which for I District should, 5. For District 5. We said it. And make sure that you can count to five so the people can get what they need. Thank you. As simple as that. As simple as that. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't endorse anybody. No. Right I'm now. not endorsing anybody. Right now. All right. <laughs> So anybody that want to come on this platform that's running for office, you are you are welcome. You are welcome to come, okay? And I'm going to treat you the same way I treat everybody else. Ain't going to be no difference, all right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like uh, Dr. Grimm just said, we got to have five. You got three. We just need two more. Y'all, with that being said, what my eyes see and my ears hear, determine what comes out of this mouth. I ain't raising hell, babies. I'm raising awareness. Now, on April the 4th, April the 4th, at 5.30 in Yamacraw, right in the new square, in front of the church, in front of the church, I am going to do my announcement. The reason I chose that day is because that's the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm -hmm. I am his dream realized. Come on now. I am his dream realized. Okay. So with that being said, I want to see you, John Q. Public, standing with me on April the 4th at 530. Now I have yard signs. If you want a yard sign, put it in the comments. Put yard signs in the comments. I want to see my signs in people's yards. I ain't going to see my signs all over the gap. I'm going to take care of the 5th District for you. Look here, in the media. Listen. <laughs> I'm with you. Hey, I know. I, I, caught the I caught the shade. But I'm going to still put the sign out there for you. I appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate you. One more thing, too. Yes. On yes. March the 29th, we need you all to show up at the oh, Coastal Georgia yes. Oh, yes, y'all. Please. Um, there, Please we need show community up. engagement mm -hmm. um, in reference to yes. the, the study that they're doing around the Waterworks building. Mm -hmm. Specifically, if you live in the first district, we need your the west side of the first district. Mm -hmm. We need your voice. Those 10 communities around the Waterworks and Arena mm -hmm. um, building. Um, so please um, be prepared to show up at 9 o'clock and, and speak what it is that you desire to see yes. in the plan for your community. Mm -hmm. I will put that on the Ivory Bay Community Development uh, Corporation page mm -hmm. and share, share, share and make sure that we pack out the building because we need your voice, not anyone else speaking for you. That's right. Now, y'all, if you want a yard sign, DM me your address because I don't know where everybody lives. Just DM me your address, and we'll make sure that you get a yard sign. Now, with what Dr. Grimm is talking about, it's serious. Yeah, it's serious. It's serious. Okay? If you live in the first, I don't give a goddamn if you don't live in the first district. If you concerned about what's going to happen with that waterworks building, have your behind up there to Farm Street on the 29th of this month. Okay? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>